Have, do, or be anything you want if you controlled your mind. You can change your thinking. One way to look at this is the thoughts you're having right now are primarily negative. So that's the first thing to notice. Your thoughts are primarily negative. The second one is, you're not your thoughts. You are separate from your thoughts. And this is massive, earth-shaking news if somebody's hearing it for the very first time. There have been books that are called, You Are Not Your Mind, You Are Not Your Brain. And what they're saying is, these thoughts that we're having, we're having them. We're not them. If we can detach enough to go, oh, here comes that, I'm not good enough thought again, and let it go by, we are one step removed from it. Now we've, we've clipped off that energy that was causing us to feel bad because of that thought. So that's the second step, is to become aware that I'm not my thoughts. Third step is to start to generate what you do want to think. And this is where things like affirmations, positive thinking, positive statements, instead of saying I'm not good enough, begin to say I am good enough. Begin to say this can work out for me. If this uh, material has worked for other people, why can't it work for me too? You know, I'm human, they're human, and you can start to rebuild your software of the mind if you want, if you will. Uh, and these are all elements, and then there's, you know, we can get into details like what you're going to tend to bring into your life are things that you think about a lot. Most people think about the things they're afraid of, the things that they're worried about. I tell people, why don't you start thinking about the things you love, the things you're passionate about. Uh, you're going to go in a new direction, you'll be happier, you'll be healthier, you know, you're going to have better momentum, better enthusiasm. So the repetition of that is going to be a big thing. Emotion, going with those feelings of passion is going to fuel you to go in a direction that you prefer. And actually having an image, and the image could be a graphical representation of what it, you want. It could be a house, it could be a car, it could be a job, it could be a pile of money, it could be spiritual awakening, whatever you can do. Because the brain, the reticular activating system in the brain, responds to repetition, imagery, and emotion. So all of this is in the direction of, it's like a condensed course on how to redirect your life, but becoming aware that you're not your thoughts, those negative thoughts, you can let them go. You can start to create new thoughts. You can actually aim where you want to go by choosing what you want, uh, getting an image of what you want, fueling it with passion and love, and then you can start to create it almost organically and automatically. Hmm. And why, why as humans do we tend not to do that? Why, where does this negativity come from? Is it an old survival instinct? That is exactly, you don't even need me to answer these questions. <laughs> no. You already know. It is an old survival instinct. What we're on alert for, we're hardwired for it. We're on alert for danger. We're on alert for anything that can stop us from breathing, from living. And so our reticular activating system, that part of our brain in the back of our head at the top of the spine, is already hardwired to be on alert for anything that is a threat to you, your loved ones, your, your life, and all of this. And so negativity and fear and worry are all things programmed to alert you that that could be dangerous. And that's fine. Our reticular activating system and our survival is working. You're here. I'm here. Your viewers are here. We can applaud that part of our system that is working. It is keeping us surviving. But what I and the other teachers are saying is that you can program it for other things. You can program it for what you want. So if you do want more wealth, or you want the romance, or you want the health, or you want the house, or the job, or a spiritual awakening, or fill in the blank, you follow the same principles that have been used to keep you surviving, but you use it for these things that you would like to have, do, or be in your life. Okay. Talk to me about imagery, because this is interesting. Um, so if I want something, I need to actually conjure up and create an image like a vision board, or just have something in my mind I'm associating with that future outcome? Well, it's both. And what I look for is some sort of, I call it a graphical representation of what you want. And a vision board is a very popular way of doing it, because a vision board is pretty much like a big poster board, and people have cut out pictures of what they want. So uh, I had a ride over here in a Mercedes. So if I wanted a Mercedes, I might go on Google and uh, conjure up a bunch of different, search for a bunch of different images, find one that really makes me excited, print it, cut it out, and put it on the vision board. And if there was a particular house, like you lived in San Diego at one point, there's some wonderful mansions and old style Mediterranean homes near the water. And uh, if I wanted one of those, I'd find some sort of image of it, cut it out, and put it on the vision board. The idea is I don't want to just think it. 
I need to communicate to my subconscious mind that this is my next desire. And so if I can see the image of it and see it a lot, that's the repetition part of it, I will be communicating to my mind that this is what I would like to attract into my life. And so vision boards are very popular and I tell people, your vision board can be on your phone, it can be on your refrigerator, it can be something that's on your dashboard, it can be something that's by your uh, bathroom, bedroom mirror, any number of these. You want to see it, you want to stumble across it. So it's not just thinking about it because your mind can just go off in a different direction and bring you a different image. You need to be reminded of it. You want to put that up there and say, there's that house, there's that car, there's that bank account, whatever it happens to Okay. Be. And should I have different images for different parts of my goals, like a house maybe, or a certain thing in my business, or a certain thing That's for my it. relationships, or my body, or... Yeah. That is a great question. There's mixed information on that. My own view is focus on one thing at a time. Hmm. If you focus on one thing at a time, you are a missile targeted and sending a powerful signal right into your subconscious mind. There's no confusion. It's like, I want this car. That's it. I don't think there's anything wrong with having like a master vision board and all the different things you were just referring to are there. So there could be the romance in the house and a boat and whatever it happens to be. It could be all on there. But I think it's wiser and more powerful, more effective, more efficient and accelerated to pick one thing at a time. When I reflect over my own life and my greatest accomplishments, I believe they came when I was really focused. When I said I'm writing this book, or I'm recording this music, or I'm going after this car, or I want this kind of awakening, and that was the primary focus, I would get it fast. His mind is only operating from previous programming. And the previous programming for virtually everybody is about lack and limitation, fear, worry, survival. Naturally so, that we're just trying to live here on the planet. But what I and other people are saying is, look, you can not only survive, you can thrive, you can prosper. You can have an exhilarating life. You just have to do a little work. And the little work is about looking at your beliefs because my rule of thumb is you change your beliefs, you get a different reality.